The chief calls me in again at the last minute. I was going to catch up on some long overdue reading. So much for that. I'd wonder what his reasonings were, if I still cared. This has all become so routine. Boy, I wish I had grabbed some coffee before I left. The Bureau has lost too many agents in the last decade. So many. They promoted me to one of their lead investigators. Usually, spellcasters aren't certified for such a prestigious position. Oh, and I mean that ironically. Things have spiked. The Nocturne are becoming more and more active. No one really knows why, or cares to tell me anyway. As long as I get a paycheck and keep my freedom, who do I care? I look at it as job security. I'm just cynical that way. This whole surge is our fault, really. After we wiped out all of the bloodsuckers, it was bound to happen. The rest of the immortal goons feared the vampires. They kept their shit together because of that. They kept the peace between the species. A supernatural cold war kind of thing. But once we staked the last lot of them, the Nocturne saw it as a green light for all hell to break loose. Homicides are up at least 25%, and acts of magic and mayhem, nearly the same. That makes the Bureau nervous. Really nervous. And humans. They're a delicate lot. Blindly stumbling down the fine line between reason and madness. You think in a world where Big Brother is always watching, we would stick out like a sore thumb. Fortunately for us, Big Brother is looking in all the wrong places. If these idiots only knew what the real threat to their mundane existence was, their fragile comfort zone would quickly become an inescapable asylum. You see, normally, Nocturnes are invisible to mankind, but not to kids. They haven't matured to ignorance yet. However, adults, they are far too distracted with their real-world bullshit to know or care. Now, being invisible has its advantages, obviously. As investigators, it allows us a certain guaranteed obscurity, which makes our job a hell of a lot easier. No mortal busybodies to complicate things. Most murders of late have been nocturne on nocturne. Only the occasional cross-species attack. Isn't it funny that we investigate the deaths of immortal beings? Seems utterly contradictory. Until you realize they are only immortal in comparison to man. <laughs> the biggest problem, the more active these creatures become, the more noticeable they are to even the most skeptical eye and mind. Then bad things happen. Really, bad things. I haven't had much time to myself for a long while. Maybe that's a good thing. I tend to get a bit melancholy when left alone with my own thoughts. Being resurrected will do that to you. The process wipes out a good part of your memories. You don't care. You must tell so there's that. But it's those moments alone, in the darkness, staring at the ceiling, that those lapses haunt you torment you with questions that there are no answers to, or ones that no one will give you. I don't complain. Whatever got lost was lost for a reason, or that is what I have convinced myself. The past is pain. We all know that. It say that pain defines us, those who are too weak to find a real identity. It's funny how numb I am to time anymore. It all seems to run together. One big quagmire called life. A swamp of experiences that are hard to differentiate. Muddied water lacking any color or visible footing. Nocturne or not, we are all just stumbling around through our existence, hoping we don't bump into anything that will cause serious injury to our minds more than body.
Well, I'm here. <laughs>